I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I recently did a video where the topic was single preppers, people who are single and are preppers. I'm one of those. And uh, the unique moment in time that we're at right now, where a lot of us that might like to change that situation, this is a really critical time to be doing that because as soon as things get really difficult for people in the world, it's gonna be really difficult to have a good sense of who your real friends are and who are people that are just drawn to the idea that, you know, they're hungry and you've got food. So, uh, you know, in that video I was talking about some of the, the challenges that are out there. I know I heard from a lot of you guys. It definitely touched the nerve with a lot of you guys. I'm certainly not the only single prepper out there. There are a number of you guys and uh, a lot of people felt really challenged, you know, challenged in the same way that I, you know, I, I was talking about it during the video. Uh, and, and I want to do this kind of a uh, uh, follow-up video on it though because I also felt that there was uh, kind of a big sense of by the way th those are the guys you hear screaming <laughs> in all of my videos is I'm not uh, torturing children in the background it's the chickens are always screaming especially when they hear me start talking doing a video they'll be all quiet and I'll start talking and then they'll all be doing that um, I wanted to do this video because of the sense of hopelessness that I heard in a lot of uh, you guys' comments. And I totally get it, you know, um, when you're trying to do something and, you know, it's not happening, it can be frustrating, especially when you feel like you're you're doing something alone. And by definition, people who are single preppers, we're, we're doing it alone. And it can definitely feel frustrating. Uh, but, and this video is all about that, but uh, I don't think that that's a reason to lose hope. You know, as preppers, the idea that something is difficult and that something, you know, is almost certain to fail, since when has that ever thwarted us before? I mean, as a prepper, you know, you're planning for, you know, asteroids to come in and hit the earth or, you know, the zombie apocalypse or, you know, World War III. Everything that we deal in is huge challenges. And the idea of being a prepper is the idea that even if something is difficult, even if something is uh, you know, almost certain to end in failure. And I'm not saying that, you know, the particular challenge that we're talking about in this video is, you know, almost certain to end in failure. But even for things that are, the whole idea of being a prepper is to have the confidence in yourself, to have the faith in yourself that this is a problem. And even if I may not know the solution right now, and I said very openly in the last video, I didn't know the solution to the problem, but I wanted to bring it up. But as a prepper, even if you don't know the solution, that's not a reason to lose hope. That is a reason to double down and, you know, just put more effort into it. As preppers, we have a great amount of confidence in our own ability to solve problems. Yeah, maybe that's a, a liability. Sometimes it's probably a liability, but it's also a strength. And I think that it's a strength we shouldn't forget. If you are someone who is a single prepper like myself, and that's frustrating to you, there's no reason to lose hope. I know that so many people in the world, uh, you know, see preppers as being a little bit oddball. And you know, to be honest, I'll, I'll admit it right now, I'm kind of an odd guy, you know? I do all sorts of, you know, weird things. I like walk through the woods holding a tripod with a camera at the end, talking to it like it's another person. Uh, you know, if I saw somebody else walking by right now, although in today's day and age, I guess this isn't seen as that odd, but you know, we all have our odd oddities. We all have our eccentricities and preppers are, you know, certainly have our, our fair share of those things as well. But so do other people, uh, you know, all across the world. And that doesn't prevent them from finding, uh, you know, companionship. And, and if you're looking for someone to be your uh, companion in life, that other person doesn't necessarily have to be a prepper. You know, in the same way that, you know, if you're a marine biologist and you, you know, want to find a partner in life, you don't have to find another marine biologist. All you need to find is someone that's compatible in terms of a lot of their, their lifestyle, uh, you know, choices that they, uh, you know, feel comfortable with. Now, uh, you know, as preppers, you know, a lot of us um, live out in the countryside. Uh, you know, a lot of us don't live out in the countryside. I live out in the countryside, so I'm going to kind of focus on that just as an example. You know, I live uh, in a place where you got to drive a good half hour to get to like a grocery store or anything else. You know, for some people, that's just not a lifestyle that they're interested in. 
you know, when the shit hits the fan, they might be pretty darn interested in that. And that's, uh, you know, what I was talking about in the earlier video, where, uh, you know, it's going to be difficult to tell the people that are really interested in that lifestyle and can live it and are interested in living it for the long uh, term, or people that, you know, are just trying to get away from a bad situation. But if you're looking for someone, you don't have to find someone who is also a prepper and also necessarily, uh, you know, has a lot of the same concerns as you. You can just find someone that is comfortable living a similar kind of life that you like to live. If you like to live in the country, you can find a banker that, that you know, doesn't necessarily think that the world's going to end, but as long as they can be supportive of you and, you know, if you look at what you do as kind of a hobby that has benefits, and that's the way that I look at prepping, it's a hobby that I enjoy that has lots of benefits and I've certainly benefited, uh, you know, so many times from my preps. Uh, you know, quite frequently here on my channel, I'll get people, uh, you know, chiming in. Uh, not, not, you know, I'm going I'm to um, roll that back a little bit. Not quite frequently, occasionally, very rarely. Uh, you know, because I don't, I don't tend to have a lot of trolls here on the channel. Uh, rarely, I will have people uh, that'll come to my channel and be like, you know, you preppers, you know, this stuff is also crazy. Like, tell me when, like. Uh, tell me like when any of this stuff is ever going to happen, like well, when any of your preps are going to be worth anything. Well, my preps pay off all the time, even if it is, uh, you know, something as simple as, you know, I want to make a veggie wrap and I don't have any greens in the house. Being a prepper has taught me things like wild plants. I'm, I didn't even plan on doing this, but I'm just going to, okay, we're right, right down here. This is some kind of a plant. Uh, this comes from something in the, the rose family that includes things like uh, raspberries, roses, strawberries. And because of that, I know that this particular leaf is safe to eat. I can nibble on that leaf right now. It might have been peed on by something, so I'm not, I'm not going to you know, finish up with it. Um, but you know, being a prepper, you can really see it as a hobby that has kind of some fringe benefits. Uh, you know, if you have a, you know, a big pantry, you don't have to worry about running out of food. And I don't mean like starving to death, just like, oh, I want to make biscuits and I, you know, I would have otherwise run out of baking powder because, you know, I'm like a normal person that doesn't stock very much of it. But I got a pantry and I know I've got tons of baking powder. You know, you can think about prepping as a hobby that has some fringe benefits to it. And as long as you can find a partner that can support you in the idea that you have this hobby that they don't have, that's totally fine. I mean, there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with that. You don't have to find somebody else that is exactly like you. And I would really advocate for the idea that, you know, maybe you don't want to find somebody that's exactly like you. Uh, I think that one of the greatest, um, the, the, one of the greatest experiences that you can have in life is uh, giving yourself the opportunity. This is elderberry, by the way, uh, medicinal elderberry. Uh, it's uh, got blackberries, and I think next year I'm going to trim this so it's not so low. There were berries right on, on this part of it this year, but I think I'm going to trim it back there. Another wild edible that I know just by kind of, you know, walking around. And here, here's one right here. This is mullen, uh, which is, mullen has all sorts of uh, properties about, like, uh, handling uh, ear infections and things like that. But I think of mullen as being the, uh, the really nice toilet paper plant because <laughs> it's got this velvety surface on it and it makes for really good toilet paper for the final wipe when you're in the woods. Anyway, um, we're, we're, we're not talking about toilet paper here. Um, yeah, if you can find someone that just supports you in your interest in doing this thing, that's really what you're looking for no matter what. You know, whether you are a prepper and you want someone that can tolerate that hobby or if you like you know, having aquariums, you know, tropical fish or, you know, a saltwater aquarium, that's a hobby that has a lot of impacts. I mean, it takes up space, it, you know, there's a financial cost to, you know, uh, uh, you know, putting together a saltwater fish tank. Uh, you know, if you're someone that likes model trains or anything, you know, prepping is not the only hobby in the world that, uh, you know, where there's kind of a cost to be involved in it. Now, I would say with prepping, you know, the cost more than pays for itself because, you know, you're buying food, you're buying it bulk. You know, you save money and it has all sorts of, uh, you know, these uh, kind of cost. Oh, something just moved over there. Something over in those bushes. It has all sorts of cost saving uh, sort of attributes to it. But, you know, it, you know for, for a partner, even if they're just looking, it's like, you know, this, you know, my, uh, you know, my partner, they're into prepping and they like, uh, you know, defensive weapons or, you know, then there's a cost to acquiring those or ammunition or any of these things. If you just look at it as a hobby, you don't have to find someone that necessarily shares your love of your hobby. You just have to find somebody that is supportive of another person, you, and your interest in this, this thing that you do. And there's another word for a person like that, and that's just called a good person. 
I mean, that's really what you're looking for. You don't need to find, a, you know, another prepper. You just find, need to find someone that is a good person that, uh, you know, will support another person in what makes them happy, what gives them satisfaction in life. And if you're trying to create a relationship with anyone that doesn't support that, you know, you're dealing with someone that I wouldn't really consider to be a good person. If you are going to be a partner with someone, it doesn't matter whether your partner is interested in prepping or butterflies or saltwater aquariums or trains or, you know, whatever it is. If you're going to be together with someone, you want someone that is going to be supportive of your, of your hobby and you should also be supportive of them in their interests. Uh, you know, that just makes for an interesting quality relationship. So. What I would like to say in this video is don't worry specifically about finding someone that is a prepper. You don't need to find somebody that is a prepper in order to find a partner in life. You just need to find a good quality person. And there's, there's plenty of those out there. I, I know it's, it's difficult. I, you know, I mentioned specifically for myself, I live kind of out in the woods remotely and you know, there's just less people, uh, you know, who live in this environment. So, you know, I've, for, for myself, I've, uh, interacted with and uh, connected with plenty of people that were great people but they live really far away so you know that has really been my biggest challenge and on top of that you know I'm a single dad and I you know I've got my boy 24 7 365 and you know it, it's kind of hard to you know work any social time into that I've never specifically had any trouble you know finding someone because you know they find out that I'm into prepping and preparedness and they're just like you know I don't want to have anything to do with that mostly because like I mentioned in the other video I have people skills and I don't bring it up right away you know it's uh, you don't have to hit people over the head with that kind of thing you know right off the bat you know it's a thing you kind of uh, you know you can bring up slowly over time because in our culture it has been trained into people to think uh, of that hobby as being kind of a negative thing but if you find a good quality person and you start bringing up that you like to, you know, buy lots of food to, at the grocery store so that you'll always have plenty and that you can buy the stuff at a lower cost. And you bring up the idea that you want to have plenty of insulation in your house and you want to have a backup heating source in case like there's a power outage or something like that. If you bring up the things uh, that preppers do one at a time kind of individually, like prior to COVID, I'm the kind of guy that has N95 masks in case there was ever something like COVID or wildfires and there's smoke in the air or whatever. If you bring up the actions individually, they all kind of make sense. It's just kind of the, um, uh, the aura around preppers that society has kind of, uh, I, you know, tried to frown upon. But as long as you find a good person that's willing to support you in whatever your hobby or interest is, as long as it's not hurting anybody, uh, that's called a good person, you know, somebody that's going to support you and your interests and you really have to make sure that you, uh, you know, reflect that back at them. Be supportive of their interests and that is what makes for a good relationship. Not one prepper finding another prepper necessarily. If you find another prepper, that's great. You know, you, you guys have already, you know, got so much in common. But you don't always have to have ex exactly the same things in common with another person and if you have someone that has all these other life experiences that can make interacting with someone so much more exciting and interesting I think when you are having the opportunity to learn about all these other things. So that's what this video is about. Don't lose hope. Preppers, as preppers, we don't lose hope in the idea that we can overcome whatever the odds are. And the odds are not as bad as maybe you're thinking. If you've set your sights that you need to find another prepper, think about that. Forget looking for a prepper, look for a good person and by definition that person's going to support you in your habits, your interests, your hobbies and everything else in life. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.